Hey guys, happy holidays. Uh, hope you had a good Thanksgiving. It's getting a little close to the other holidays, and uh, I'm working a lot on uh, you know gifts, presents, stuff like that. So um, videos are going to be a little short. I'm going to do a little uh, short series of videos uh, about making tools for the power hammer and different things like that. I'm gearing up to start production on some stuff, and I'll show you those tools as I build them and put them together. So anyway, a couple of notes. One is Sarge. Your uh, package will be out soon. I'm uh, going to do something special for you, so hang on. If uh, the rest of you don't know who I'm talking about, that's Metal Morphist. I'll put his uh, link to his channel in the description below. And so check him out. He's got some really cool stuff, and uh, he makes a lot of a lot of stuff and a lot of different things. And he's into pipes and biking stuff like that. So check him out. So anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build a lower die for the power hammer. It's a uh, tapering die. Never used one before. Uh, I've seen a couple of them. And we're going to give this thing a shot. And it's to build chisels, punches, basically taper the ends of things and plenish them to make them nice. So anyway, my hope is, is I'll be able to build a real nice punch. I'm going to use some uh, A2 air hardening um, steel and we'll see how that goes. So stick with me and we'll see how this goes, guys. Thanks, see you soon. Okay guys, this is gonna be a quick one. So the uh, bracket you see at the bottom there, that piece of angle is a spring bracket off of a model AA Ford 1931. And that little chunk of metal that I had on top as the taper die is just a piece of scrap. Knock the bolts out of this thing and clean it up a little bit. So we weld to it. And it fits perfectly on that lower anvil up against the little block that I made. So this thing, what we did is we took it off of, it was actually a piece that I sliced off of the mild steel anvil when I built it. It came right off there. And we're just going to go with the taper that it is. I'm not even sure what degree of angle that is. We're going to clean it up a little bit so we can weld on it and have a halfway smooth surface to forge with. And this is a piece of 5 8 by, you know, it's two and a quarter, I believe. And I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of that, put it on either side, and use it as a kiss block. I'm going to clean these things up. Give ourselves some nice clean edges to weld on, and they'll go just like that. Okie doke. I'm going to get it over in the big vise, close to the welder. Square everything up, center it. And I know, I know, I should be welding, wearing welding gloves and all that stuff. Um, I rarely ever wel wear welding gloves at all. It, um, they just get in my way. I can't feel what's going on. And uh, I've never had an issue, but... If you feel the need to yell at me about it, go ahead. My wife does all the time. Okay, so I'm cutting a lot of this welding out because it's just boring. And uh, we'll get through this part pretty quick. So anyway, we're welding these uh, blocks on the side. Like I said, kiss blocks. And that's where the hammer will stop. And the wedge, or the taper port portion of the die, is actually just a hair taller and we're going to have to do something about that. There we go, all welded up. And we put a straight edge across there. You can see the top where it's a little bit taller. So we'll just take it over to the other vise, which is a little lower. And we get a grinder on that thing. He's a big 7-inch grinder on this one. So all this stuff we're using is reclaimed stuff from the scrap pile on the floor next to my Ford. I'm sure you've seen it. So, there you go. Alright, nice new set of tongs just built. Seems to work really well. And there she is. We'll put a straight edge on there and make sure that we're good. And yeah, we're pretty darn close. Good enough for what we're doing. Okie doke. There we go. It's still warm. I'm fiddling around with it here. We'll get a couple of clamps on it. 
give this thing a shot and see how it comes out. Like I said, I've never used one of these things before. This was a bit of a learning experience. So, like a big dummy, I uh, should have just started off making a square and then tapering down from there just like you would on the anvil. And I started rolling it around and that kind of thing. But I eventually uh, got a clue and got my act together and squared it off and uh, started working really well at that point. So I blended all these heats together. Um, this particular A2, it just, it's hard as heck and the heats don't last very long. I had a little uh, blemish on the end there, so I used the die to sort of isolate that right there and get it over to the uh, hot cut, take that off, and then we'll get it back in the taper and clean it up. Make it nice and straight. And these last couple of heats, I let it cool down quite a bit and uh, sort of plunished it to make it uh, as smooth as I could. I wanted to do very little sanding on it. I wanted to see how close I could get without having to uh, do too much sanding. And it came out pretty darn smooth. I was impressed. So we're going to bring it up to critical temperature and let it cool. And a bunch of scale popped off it after it cooled and it uh, sort of contracted. So the sanding that you're seeing me doing here on the belt sander is all the sanding I did to this thing. It did not take long. All the blemishes came out. It uh, sanded really well. It smoothed out really well. It was very little I had to take off this thing. Clean up the hammer end. I don't leave any marks in a hammer. And I found using the soft part of the belt, the flexible part up there, it was just so much easier. It made it so much smoother. It worked out well. All right, so we've got a piece of uh, two inch by half inch thick mild steel and we're going to give this thing a shot and you see me cooling it off in water there I don't want to uh, overheat it deform it make it malleable again that actually worked pretty well I uh, had a little plug left back in there but it was just that thick piece of steel had grabbed it, it popped right out you can see it there Nice clean hole, a little plug. That little uh, tip on the end of that thing, it makes a little concave in that plug and uh, it kind of narrows it a little bit, helps push it out. It's a brilliant idea. I don't know who came up with it, but good on them. So there you go. It did discolor. Then we'll clean that up to see how uh, it looks. And uh, I think we're good. And you can see inside that hole, there's just the tiniest bit of rag in there. I may have been off by just a little bit, but it looks pretty darn clean. It's one of the better punches I've made. All right, guys, there you go. Okay, well, that was fun. Um, that punch worked out really well. This guy right here. You can see him. He uh, I cleaned it back up after he used it. It had discolored. I wanted to make sure that it didn't uh, chip or crack or had any deformation issues. And uh, it looks pretty good. It works really, really well. I kind of took a page out of Alex Steele's book um, and put a little point right on the end. And you can get it into your uh, center punch mark really easily if you've got one. Um, it helps you center up a little bit. And uh, it worked out really well. It pushed those plugs out 
just fine. So uh, anyway, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I appreciate it, and uh, have a good one. I almost forgot. Um, so there's a Facebook page, Big Dog Forge, on Facebook. It's just started. There's not anything on it at the moment, but... Um, I'll be sending out some friend requests uh, in the next day or so, some people that ask. The uh, other thing is there's an email address, bigdogforging at gmail.com. So if you need to send me any kind of correspondence, uh, that way you can do that as well. Okay, and uh, we'll see you next time around. So take care, enjoy, be safe. See you guys. Bye.